We are going to watch a clip from CNBC that is depressing to me because it really demonstrates that we are living in that dystopian late stage capitalist society that we always feared. But it's here now. And this clip is two individuals on the network reacting to news that any normal person should be repulsed by. So it's news that during this pandemic, billionaires have substantially grown their wealth. They've increased their wealth collectively by half a trillion dollars while millions of Americans face eviction. So they're going to explain why this actually isn't bad news. To the contrary, it's good news. And not only that, billionaires getting richer during a pandemic is inspirational. They literally made this point. Their year for IPOs is turning into a banner year for newly minted American billionaires. Robert Frank joins us now with more. Um, I'm celebrating, Robert. I'm not one of them, but I'm just on the record. I'm not Bernie Sanders. I'm, I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that there's taxes, there's philanthropy. There's the possibility it can happen to other people if you work hard and have a great idea. I like millionaires and I like billionaires, but uh, you go ahead. I'm not going to comment on this. I have, I have no editorial opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these stories are just really inspirational, no matter what your point of view. You've got this week two IPOs, six billionaires, over $40 billion in personal wealth. You look at DoorDash, they minted three new multi-billionaires this week. CEO Tony Shu, he's now worth over $2.7 billion. You've got co-founders Andy Fang and Stanley Tang. They were all friends at Stanford, and they did the first coding and food delivering while working at night while they were students at school. Those two guys worth $2.5 billion. Now, the winner of the week was Brian Chesky. He, of course, Airbnb CEO. And he's one of three co-founders who started the company when they were flat broke, sitting in a San Francisco apartment, they decided to rent out air mattresses to make the rent. Chesky, now worth over $11 billion. He also got a share grant this fall, valued at $1.8 billion, so that's on top of that. And he and the other guys cashed out about $90 million in stock yesterday. Now, co-founders Joe Gebbia and Nathan Blacharzik, they are now worth over $10 billion, also cashing out some of those shares. Now, in total... American billionaires have gained a trillion dollars in wealth just this year. I think about Amazon, too, and, I, you know, people complain, no taxes, all that kind of stuff. Think of the, the jobs. Think of the, the, the taxes paid by all the employees of Amazon. Amazon. Think about the, the uh, people that own the stock and what that's done for, for their retirement and for wealth creation and for... Uh, asset values. Think of all those things. Would you really want to get whatever it, it, they would pay per year? Is that really so important that you, or, you know, or, that, that, that you strap? Yeah, or you're like Elon Musk. Elon Musk, who's about a tenth of that trillion this year. He's over $110 billion in wealth added just this year. And, and he's told California, which, right. you know, he believes has gone excessive regulation, excessive taxes. Forget it. I'm in Texas. So now the, the three richest people in the world do not pay state income taxes, and I right. think that's a signal. Well, that was great the other day when we, when we had that discussion about New York. I love the guy. I love the guy. He, he, he really wants to tax rich people except for the salt because if, <laughs> if you don't do the salt, they're going to move. So you do like rich people if they stay. You just don't like I mean, I could not understand. Right. Do you understand that logic at all? I don't understand that we, we like Democratic rich people. We don't like Republican wealthy people. I think that was the message that the Democrats Maybe that was saying. it. Well, we, can't we all just get along? Uh, anyway, all right, yes. Robert. Oh, I can assure you, we don't like rich people who are Democrats as well. We don't like all of them. And when we say eat the rich, we're not saying eat the right wing rich. We're talking about eating all of them. So um, my response overall to that, if I could summarize it, is uh, this. You were supposed to lick the boot, not deep throat it. And the reason why, you know, that guest on the program, why his mouth was so dry and why you heard this is because when they cut away to B-roll, he was actually continuing to lick the boots of billionaires. Got him. <laughs> I mean, this honestly left me speechless. I saw this and I thought... This is indistinguishable from satire. Like, if you told me this was a skit on SNL, I would believe it. It's that bad.
Now, I know that CNBC, I'm not their target audience, right? The demographic is wealthy people, I, I guess. Uh, but what they said here is ridiculous. So, uh, I like millionaires and billionaires. But why? Why do you like millionaires and billionaires? Why do you worship them? Why does just having a lot of money make them worthy of your praise? Why? What's the point? And the only thing that I could say is that it's it's delusions, right? I like millionaires and billionaires because I believe that maybe one day I could be part of that club. But that's that's not the case. You're not going to be a millionaire. You're not going to be a billionaire. I mean, maybe these folks on CNBC will, but the average person, you have a greater statistical likelihood of getting struck by lightning or getting eaten by a shark than becoming a billionaire. So the American dream is dead. So what reason do you have to like millionaires and billionaires other than just being a fucking sycophant? I don't know. They also say these stories are just really inspirational. No matter what your point of view, six billionaires over 40 million in personal wealth how is this inspirational? What normal person reacts to this story of billionaires growing their wealth exponentially during a pandemic and thinks, oh, well, this is so inspirational. This just proves that like anyone can make it. They're billionaires. And sure, some people break through the ranks and they end up getting wealthy. They, making, uh, they end up making a name for themselves. But that is very, very statistically unlikely and having more than a billion dollars in personal wealth that isn't a thing that happens unless you exploited your workers jeff bezos couldn't be a billionaire if he actually paid his workers well treated his workers appropriately but that's not the case Thousands of Amazon warehouse workers are overworked to the point where they're pissing in bottles, they're contracting COVID-19, they're not paid a living wage, and there's a reason why Jeff Bezos has the money that he has. There's a reason why he's the richest person in the world, specifically because he exploited the labor of, of his employees. Also, they say people complain about Amazon and taxes paid. Think of the jobs. Think of all of the taxes paid by employees of Amazon. So he says this, he doesn't realize how infuriating it is that he's applauding Amazon workers paying taxes, but not the actual company itself. Why is it better that people who can't afford it as much are paying, but the company who makes billions of dollars in profit, in fact, I believe that Amazon is now a trillion dollar company, that's not like something that would be better. I just, I don't get the thinking. I don't get the thinking. These people are fucking idiots. Like, I'm trying to like present you with commentary here that's reasonable and, and uh, like I'm trying to be nuanced here but I don't think there's anything else to uh, say about this these are idiots these are sycophants these are bootlickers they're saying what the establishment wants them to say but if you truly like millionaires and billionaires in the way that you say that you do then understand that if they keep hoarding wealth especially when people are suffering when millions are going hungry on unemployment facing an eviction, an eviction crisis then when the pitchforks come out, you'll learn that your precious billionaires would have been better off if they didn't be so fucking openly greedy. Because that's the thing. It's like they're flaunting their wealth. How, much, how many billions of dollars did Elon Musk make in 2020 alone during a pandemic? Yeah, so this, honestly, this segment, uh, it, it made me rage. And uh, I think that any reasonable person will see this and be disgusted by it because this is only something that a late stage capitalist dystopian society could produce.